blue. That's a good thing, since I'm the only other one. An important discovery! We have encountered a wild blue Spix macaw deep in the Amazon jungle. We're not the only ones. There may be a whole flock out there. We have to help Linda and Tulio find them! We? What you talking about we? You speak French. Blue is back, Martin. Yeah. And I'm saying the same thing I said last time. How the hell you get a fine-ass bird like that? <laughs> So corny ass. I mean, a fine bird. You can uh, t- you can tell how fine a bird is. You know, he got that bird, Julia. Yeah, she's fine. I mean, for a cartoon bird, yeah. I love it. With, with, with cartoon female cartoon characters, they just draw long eyelashes on them, and suddenly they're beautiful. It's hot. Well, no, they gave her two little bumps for some breasts too. You know. <laughs> She's she kind of fine, and she got she in Brazil. She got look just got a little bit of an ass too. If you look under that, if you look under them tail feathers, man. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I ain't trying to hate another man. Really, I, I mean, not. Blue got it. Blue, blue voiced by Jesse Eisenberg again, by the way. Yeah. And Jewel is voiced by Anne Hathaway. But I mean, Blue got it, so I ain't trying to play a hate. But goddamn, Blue's a corny motherfucker, man. Yeah, he's pretty nerdy. I mean, I mean, it's just Jesse Eisenberg. Or Jesse Eisenberg, as the case may be. Okay, goddamn. <laughs> you know this movie. This movie is corny enough without you adding to it, man. You ain't got to do this shit. Got a little bit of description here about the movie though for you, Martin. So Blue and Jewel, they had three kids now, right? Yeah, and three little badass kids getting into everything. Can't sit their ass down. And one of the reasons why they can't sit their ass down is because they got everything they need. I mean, they are, because they, they live in the, the life of the domesticated bird. Right. Every convenience is there. They eating canned food. Hey, you know what? They're, they're I guess, what, owners or friends, be, the humans they live with, yeah. treat them like people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. These, these birds, they don't know they don't know the difference. These are birds that eat pancakes for breakfast. It's, that's the thing. They sitting there eating a breakfast and I'm sitting there in the theater in the morning going like, Damn. <laughs> I want some of that. <laughs> yeah, you ain't even ate breakfast yet. I ain't supposed to be jealous of a cartoon bird. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you're talking about me. At least I'm saying the bird is hot. You mad at these birds, they get pancakes. <laughs> now, who's more petty, you or me? I think you. No, I'm a little more sick than you are. <laughs> okay, 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 fair But you're enough. a little more petty than okay, I am. Fair enough, jealous fair of some, kid, some children birds eating pancakes. with my pancakes in? <laughs> but anyway, Jewel sees this shit. And she knows how, how how blue was when she met him, and she said, "You know what? I can't let my kids grow up to me. No they, they, punk they, ass they, like they, this. Yeah, they can't be soft like no. They can not let a little punk ass like that. I mean, baby, I love you, but you know, you yeah, you soft. You know, you punk ass. I gotta take these kids back to their roots. Let them know where, where where they came from. Take them out to the wild. Let them see what's up. So they plan a rainforest vacation. Martin, kids are cool with it." Sure. And Jewel is cool with it. All the one complaining is blue. I, 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 I can't do that. You know, do a old Woody Allen ass bird. Well, now, 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 now. You, you make it sound like, like blue's in the wrong here. But blue is throwing a major curveball. And what is it? Well, okay, yeah. They're all down there because the humans who are just kind of stuck in this because they ain't know what else to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the humans are the owners, Linda and Tulio. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're down there because, like, we have to fight for the rainforest. And, of course, there's some evil developers trying to knock the rainforest down yeah. just as fast. But forget about them. We, we focus on our heroes, the, the blue and his family. And they're they, they supposed to be like the last of the blue macaw birds. Yeah. Turns out they're not. There's a whole nest of them, all of Julia's family with the, you know, the, the papa led by Andy Garcia. Andy Garcia, Eduardo played by Andy Garcia. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. We see that the, going to the rainforest ain't bad. I mean, they, they down there trying to save the rainforest. They, they meet some, uh, some long-lost family. Oh, yeah, yeah. They live with the family. Like, yeah. hey, this, this, is, this, this is the real shit. Yeah. We, we went my Brazilian. You see, kids, these are your peoples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, this, this is the real shit. So you don't know your roots. Yeah, yeah. You're doing that white people shit. Right, right, right. <laughs> we need to get back into this blue people shit. Right. right. Now, they bring along all their, all their characters characters from the last movie who really don't have j- well, shit to that's do. That's what I'm saying. The, the vacation would be cool, except they had to bring back old asshole Nigel, played by uh, Jermaine... Uh, oh, oh uh, Jermaine, uh, Jermaine, uh, Jermaine Clement. Jermaine Clement, who, you know, he can't, he can't let old shit go. No, no. You know, he sees them going to the rainforest. He's got a job, but he's saying, I'm going to get back at that motherfucking man. But yeah, the reason it's stressful for Blue is because, yeah, everybody here is Brazilian and pop, pop. He's like that machismo, Hispanic male figure. Yeah, he don't, he don't like no soft white boy <laughs> married to his daughter. <laughs> he's like, oh, boy, a gringo, huh? I know. This, this is not. Ex- hey, listen, 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 listen. Check out Bruno Mars right there. Except, yeah, he, when he, he can sing, he's a badass athlete. 
Y'all grew up together. You know what y'all, what y'all had going. See, this should be my son. And you know what? And Bruno Mars plays old, you know, he's like a, a Latin sex symbol, but uh-huh. Roberto. And he said, and the best thing about Roberto is, Roberto's La Raza. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We got we got Larasa over here, Miguel over here. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm Miguel. I call you Miguel. So I'm in mood right I like now. How you hispanicized his name, Miguel? Yeah, but you do have a uh, uh, your last name Guzman. Guzman. You might be related to Blue. <laughs> no, you know Blue's white. You know you're gonna be really. I'm sorry, you're gonna be related to uh, Eduardo. That comment. <laughs> but man, what I like about these real movies, because look, I'm gonna start out. On, I'm gonna get off on the nice foot. Okay. Because what I like about these real movies is that I think they're beautiful, man. I think that's it's a great decision to have set this in South America. Rio, you get the you get the music, the bossa nova. You get the wonderful colors, you get samba. You get the samba, you get you get the party atmosphere. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, you might even see a little bit of that Brazilian ass coming in. Now, that was in the first movie. That was in the first. When, when they when they go to Carnival, when I'm like, um Okay, you guys are making a kids movie, and I think you don't know what Carnival is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'm if, last time I went to Carnival, they were fucking in the street. Yeah, the, well, that was the whole thing when I'm showing Carnival, even in the last movie. I'm like, y'all trying to tame it up, and it's still a bit, it's a little bit risque for a kids movie. They they managed to they 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 they, they actually sneaked the ass cheek in. I know, you know I know. Did you, I saw. Did you notice yeah, that? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it, if anybody saw, I saw. <laughs> and another thing, I ain't even nowhere near Carnival. <laughs> Only carnival I went to was in that fucking garage over here, and you know in Austin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they got that, over here. That carnival light. I took Portuguese. Can't even speak that shit. <laughs> Shut up about going to carnival. You ain't been sh- to, to shit anyway. But all that works, and because they've taken that theme, man, the designs of the characters very colorful. The design of the whole film very colorful. Again, it's a whole festive design. Sure. But I think their character design is is very good. Well, for the animals at least. Yeah, I thought a lot, a lot of the animals have done very well, but outside of that, I can't really okay. say a whole lot. All right, man. See, you and I always we get to these mid-level animated movies, yeah. and we can never agree. But this time, Except, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know what I'm saying. This, this time, we were right on point because like the, the only thing I thought was that that worked in this movie were the colors. I'm like, yes, it's beautiful. Everything else, this is like like Ice Age two. Like like to me, even the first Rio was not good. It was just kind of like, hey, I liked we, it better than you that that time. Sure, sure, yeah. but I just thought it's mediocre at best. Yeah. I'm not hating it, but it's just kind of there. And then you know, it's it's so generic how they put this together. You can see a committee, you know, put the script together, whatever. Here, this is like Ice Age two, where it's like, hey, people liked it. We made a lot of money. Let's let's make another movie. They trying to they crowbar in all those other characters. Well, they don't have jack shit for them to do. They're like, um, you guys are trying to put on a talent show. For what? That's, see, that's the biggest problem with this movie. Yeah. Look, there's some talking bird shit. All right? You don't need all these stories. The, you, you, have, <laughs> you have the meet the parents riff. Right. You right. have the talent show, like you said. You have the revenge of Nigel. Right. You got a frog trying to fuck Nigel. <laughs> Right. You know, that's and, another plot. And, and, and don't forget the, the land developers knocking down the rainforest. And then save the rainforest. And, and oh, let's not forget the rival gang, the, the parents are oh, fighting over the territory. That's right. With the, with the macaws. Honestly, it's like they wrote down a bunch of ideas on napkins and none of them were enough to carry this movie. So they just decided, like, just, just pack it all in here. Yeah, you don't need that much. These kids don't give a fuck about half this stuff. No, no. The, the, the meet the parents plot should have been the meat of the whole thing. It's a, yeah, it's... Sure, it's a rip off of something, but that was the strongest story. It was, that was it working. was it was the strongest story. Everything yeah. everything everything else felt like an afterthought. And, and, yeah. and even like like okay, you remember how like like a big character Tracy Morgan is that that, that pug dog was yeah. in the last movie? You notice how he's in the beginning, it's not to the very end of the movie, they parachute him in. Just to go like, hey, guys, don't forget about me. I ain't got a fucking thing to do in this movie except <laughs> put cartoon slob over everything right, because, and just give Tracy Morgan a goddamn paycheck. Because why would a pug dog be going to South America? And, that, and it really is one of those things where they, they don't even try to make a clever story why no. he's tagging along. He's like, hey, guys, I'm back. Yeah. I'm here. It's like, who? How the fuck do you even get on this boat, man? <laughs> Shoot, we halfway down the fucking river. How, did you swim all the way here? Hey, Dad, look at this. Did you know the Amazon has snakes that can swallow you whole? <laughs> oh, that's sick. All right, we ready to go? 
Harla, we're leaving. I'm not going. It's gonna be lame. Hey, hey wait up, family. I'm coming too. <laughs> Don't worry, buddy. We got your back. Eva let you come? Sure. I promised her a spot in the carnival show. You guys are late. Clock late, but musician early. Wait, you guys are coming? Okay. I, I guess I'll go. Amazon jungle or bus, baby? Who is ready for a tropical adventure? Yeah. Oh, I know I am. Right. Let's wait, go, wait, wait. Dad, can you carry this? Wait, we didn't do a head count. Hey, guys, wait up. Uh -huh. Hey, birds, come back. They left without me. Again. That's messed up. Yeah, they had the they had the precocious kids. But, yeah. But it seemed like, like in the beginning, they, they had an idea what they were going to do with them, but... After a while, they just got lost. They didn't know what the fuck they were doing. And I'll tell you the reason why that subplot of Meet the Parents rip-off story was working. Because Andy Garcia, as Eduardo, who's the long-lost father. He call me Pop-Pop. Uh, pop, call me Pop-Pop, kids. <laughs> Except you, gringo. <laughs> Except you, white boy. <laughs> call me sir. <laughs> Look at me. I'm a grandpa. Oh. Nice to meet you, sir. You will call me Pop-Pop. Kids, pop, pop. go easy on old Pop-Pop. You can call me sir. <laughs> Cause that's what he told Jess Eisenberg, and that's why I liked it. Yeah. Because look, I, look, we, we're joking with we're joking with the race thing, people. But not, see, not, <laughs> they don't come on say it, but it's pretty blatant. <laughs> but they, but they're not. And I can't blame Eduardo or Andy Garcia, whatever you want to call yeah. him, because I can't. Man, in the last movie, I, I just I was tolerant of Blue. Right. I just dealt with him. I, right. He was the he was a device for the story. Blue got on my fucking nerves in this movie, man. Yeah, yeah he was a, he was a bit too much. Too and. But, but but I don't know. But I I never know how much to say. But there is a curve that's thrown at him where I had complete sympathy for him to the point of being mad for him. Okay, I, I know what you're saying. You know, a, you know what I'm talking about. That's the only time he got my sympathy. There's a. It's one of those stories where one of those subplots where Blue just cannot do the right thing around these people. Right. They're just not going to accept him. But there is one point where you where he fucked up so bad. <laughs> And he fucked up so bad that I said, wow, man, you fucked up so bad. I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Because they really ain't going to accept you now. In fact, yeah. they're probably going to take you back to the nest and, <laughs> right. and, and gang beat your ass. <laughs> Kick the shit out of you. Just peck the fuck out of you. <laughs> I mean, God damn. I mean, it was just so It was stupid. But you know what? That was his first time, too, of this thing that we're not telling people about. Right, right. But for the parents, he's going to probably get the biggest laugh because we... We've all either seen that kid who tried to play sports and fucked up this way, or, yeah. or that kid is yours. <laughs> right, right. But it's you know his heart was in the right place. You you feel bad like the position that he was in, but it's just what comes after that. Where I was like, oh man, that's some bullshit right there. Yeah, they didn't have to do him like that. Yeah. But you know they were looking for an excuse. Yeah, yeah, they were. In fact, Andy Garcia was like, yeah, I'm glad he fucked up. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, we can, now we can get his ass out of here. <laughs> See, you know, you know, you know, Eduardo went back to June and said. See that old pussy ass husband of yours? Now look at Roberto over here. Right. What more do you need? Oh, retarded ass husband of yours. Now, I can't feel sorry for Blue outside of that. Blue can't even go. The first moment he they even leave the nest to go to the rainforest, he got that fanny pack on. I can't stand a fanny pack. Uh, I know, I know how much I, you hate a fanny pack. I hate a motherfucker with a fanny pack. But the pack. thing is, man, you know, Blue, he's uh he's urbane, he's metropolitan. He ain't with these country folk. Think, think about you go, you go visit your, 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 your relatives in the backwoods, and you're like, yeah, Corey, we're going we gonna to barbecue up a possum. You're going to love this. And you be sitting there just taking little mini bites. And Have you like, been to one of my family reunions? <laughs> <laughs> it's usually skunk. <laughs> possum on a good day. <laughs> That's some gourmet shit. But I think a lot of people can identify with that when you're like, come on, you with your people. You got to eat this. And like. I ain't eating that. That's gross. No, what you do is you eat that shit. That's another thing that <laughs> that, that uh, Blue is is doing. He's going there. He can't even be, get the courtesy of just manning the fuck up and just eating what they eat. <laughs> it ain't even that bad. It ain't like some Temple of Doom shit. <laughs> well, you know they eating, they eating better than than people in India. <laughs> and what I just said, just eat this shit. It's just a fucking nut, man. <laughs> All right, I was like, did it come from a can? You know, shut the fuck up, you fanny pack wearing motherfucker. And by the way, if a cartoon bird can't let make a fanny pack look good, then your human ass can't either. Oh, well, get, take that shit off. I know flamingo is more macho than you. <laughs> You know, yeah. shit. You wouldn't even see the fucking movie. You already don't like this bitch, do you? I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, man. I was. I, I don't know. I. I was just sitting there, just like, can can this just end already? Because I can already map where it's gonna go <coughs> well, and what it's gonna do. And it takes so many shortcuts. 
And even when it comes to the big action scene, it's like, yeah, y'all are just pulling kind of lame comedy. Well, I tell you, man, there are bits and pieces of things that work in there. Most of the songs don't work. And I and okay, I, I I thought I might get pushback from that because those songs, I was like, these are so unimpressive. The actual you know choreography of the of the dance number is fine. Yeah, but the song itself, yeesh. Yeah, well, there is okay. So there was one plot in there that could have worked, and it was ruined because one, it went on too long. Yeah, and it was ruined by a song, which is funny because it's a song that actually that actually made the this this subplot work. The subplot between Nigel and that frog. Okay, yeah. And I wish I could find find that frog's name, but that frog, it's a, it's. A, I know it's Kristen Chenoweth who did the voice. There of the frog. you go. That's what I'm thinking of, and I can't forgot the frog's name. But anyway, the frog is uh, Gabby. Okay, yeah. And Gabby, I don't know what is going on with Gabby. Gabby is got some got some uh, uh, some insecurity problems. Yes, yeah. she wants to fuck Nigel so bad. So bad. That's Shakespeare, by the way. Without your performance, it's nothing. And she, I mean, and, she, and she's and she's lamenting this because she says, "I'm poisoned. I can't touch anything. I can't touch another frog, much, much less this fucking bird over here." But she fantasizes about that that bird so much. And there's a song where she's singing about getting with Nigel, and I thought that that was the best song You're right. in the movie, outside of the bossa nova stuff that they that actually fits with the film. Yeah. And it's kind of nasty too, because that frog is almost touching herself, singing about Nigel. <laughs> Nigel, uh, uh, no, fuck Nigel. Oh shit, Nigel. <laughs> the sad thing is, Nigel was, was such like he was a standout character from the first movie, and here they's like it's just so clear, like we don't know what to do with him. We yeah. gotta have him in it, but we don't know what to do. Well, do you know how clever it was when they first introduced Nigel? Yeah, and you thought. Oh shit! This is gonna be good. Yeah, Nigel's plotting shit, and Nigel's that kind of asshole villain where he's so full of himself, yeah, and so cocky, and you just and but you take pleasure in that because he has some of the best lines. Yeah, until this shit turns into this is what I hate about these animated films more so this one because you're ruining that vibe of the bossa nova, the colors, the theme, and Nigel's plot by trying to be corny guy hip. Yeah, Nigel comes in. Singing his songs like he like you think he was saying, and then for, for some fucking reason, Nigel just started. He got to start rapping, rapping. and popping. I know, yeah. I know. Nigel, any other fucking character in this movie could have yeah. fucking rapped and popped and locked. Nigel, yeah. Nigel, the thespian who <laughs> fancies himself as you know Shakespearean and uh-huh. all that shit, rapping out of fucking nowhere. You know, and that's what I hate about this kind of movie. What I mean by by corny guy hip, you know that corny guy at the party. You have some urban slang that's about five years old. Yeah. But he's still the one popping out. Oh, no, you did it. Yeah. And everybody yeah. looks at you like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, he's, he's still he, he was still pulling his slang from old episodes of The Fresh Prince. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, tries to ha- he tries to rap, but he's still rapping like The Fresh Prince uh-huh. from 1980. Right. I well, my name it. is Nigel. I'm here to say. I'm you know? here to say. <laughs> yeah, that shit. Yeah. And wave your hands in the air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you just don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? That kind of shit. Either... Be true to the to 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 hip hop if you're trying to do that. Be true to any kind of trendy hip thing out there. Do it right. I don't do it at all. And it's insulting in here because they don't need it. This this movie is very much a do it right or don't do it at all. And they, yeah, they did neither. <laughs> <laughs> I know that there's a lot of people are making a lot of arguments for why this movie would work. One of them being that. It's a kid's movie. The colors are beautiful and the characters are energetic and vibrant and kids love that kind of thing. And I'm going to tell you, as somebody who don't have fucking kids, <laughs> don't have to deal with this, and I'm telling you, as a parent who has to take them here, most of this shit is, I think, in my mind, is kind of annoying. Yeah, it's, 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 it's played or it's annoying. And it's just one of these things where that whole thing of like, well, it's low level, it's for the smallest kids and it's, uh, it's colorful. And that's what that's why we have director video. Exactly. I, I'm going to say, look, even if you, you, some of you might go and, I, and you might be entertained about it. Don't let me try to force my opinion on these parents out here too much. There were plenty of adults laughing when they went to see this because, I don't know, I guess because y'all are parents. Y'all, been out, y'all ain't been to the club in a while. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know what's cool no more. So y'all laughing at that corny shit too. So maybe you'll enjoy it. I'm just from a personal point of view. I'm going to tell you, if you got to take your kids, 
matinee on an early Saturday. That's that kind of movie. But we're talking about how beautiful and colorful and how vibrant it is. That shit. That's big 50 inch TV shit right there. Well, on, and, D- on DVD or download. Yeah, yeah. Something. Because I was gonna say, like, yeah, most people have most people have 50 inch TVs. Yeah. So I, I can't. I honestly can't give you a reason to go out to the theater to see this yeah. when there's plenty of other movies that you can take your kids to right now. Exactly. That's I guess we're both seeing rental right rental, here. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. And speaking of kids, there's a couple of what the fuck moments in this movie. <laughs> I mean, for a rated G movie, yeah. man, we've seen some PG movies where we said this could, this could easily be rated G. And this one, there's a couple of death scenes where I'm, I said, "Fuck!" Oh, that's <laughs> you right. know what they I'm saying? Those. Yeah, they are big on that. Yeah, I mean, they in the Amazon. That's, Amazon, right, fuck you. There's a whole death montage, which, which actually, you know what? I take it back because that was like the one thing I thought was cool. Because the Amazon, like, like the two places with the last bit of the most dangerous predators <laughs> is the Australian outback yeah. and the Amazon. Exactly. <laughs> and, and you know what? They said, shit, there's just no way we can get around making a movie <laughs> about the Amazon. I don't care if it's for kids or whatever without killing something. Yeah. And there's a couple where they just gloss right over it. <laughs> yeah. I ain't sitting up there thinking that shit is funny. I was kind of disturbed. <laughs> it's like, whoa. This shit ain't there. Y'all just partying over here and this motherfucker's already dying. Man, I can't wait to get out to the rainforest all these beautiful birds and piranha fish shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll end with this one last. I wish I could end with the I, I, with the praise of the film but I gotta end with a complaint because there are some character designs in here that are great and I think that the only thing that could have been better about them is that they reflected the voice actors a little bit more uh-huh. Jamie Foxx's character the bird design is actually not bad but I don't think it reflects his voice too well no. it's such a generic design I know and I also think that's the same for Will I Am fits a little bit better you know they're a duo sure and Amy May, uh, is it is it Amy? Amy, oh, uh, 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 yeah, Leslie Mann. Leslie Mann. Amy Mann is a fucking singer. Leslie Mann <laughs> and Tulio, who was who is from three hundred. Yeah, right? yeah, Rodrigo Santoro. Yeah, Rodrigo, Rodrigo Santoro. He, he's like he's like the preeminent Brazilian actor working in American. He film. must be because he went from being a god to a <laughs> fucking cheesy ass cartoon character. I know. He's like he like. Like he's probably the only character that's cornier than Blue. Yeah, <laughs> come on, man, get that Latin love and shit going on. You know, come on, get your Ricky Ricardo shit going on, man. Some people say that ain't, that ain't even from the same place. I know. Come on, <laughs> you racist motherfucker. That's another thing. Human characters in these movies are getting to be They're such a generic. Oh, they design, they are beyond an afterthought. Yeah, yeah, I, that's so uninspired, man. If you ain't making an animal, I guess they just don't give a shit. Right. So, <laughs> Hey, man, we have some trivia do for you. you. Yes, we do. I know you didn't see that coming, did I you? I did not. Speaking of some of the bird characters in the movie, you know who Eva is in the film? Eva. Eva. You know, George Lopez plays a character. He's one of the leftovers. Another right. character they didn't know what the fuck to do with. Right, right. George Lopez is Raphael. Uh-huh. Raphael is married to Eva, or at least has oh, made it with her. Oh, right, right, right. Eva... Is she wants to be in the talent show, but she can't sing for shit. Uh huh. That's a that is a little bit of a clever inside joke in the movie. Sure. If you really want to go that deep with this, shit. <laughs> the the character is voiced by Babel Gilberto. Oh, is is that like the granddaughter of oh, Joao uh, Ast- Gil- uh, Gilberto? I, I don't know. I know it's the daughter of Joao Gilberto. Okay. Who is another Bossa Nova? Yeah, famous well, you know, Ast- Astrid uh, Gilberto and Babel G- G- Gilberto. Gilberto, so, she's known for the girl from Ipanema, and she has done a lot of music. Beautiful, yeah. she in real life one of the most beautiful singers in the world. Yeah, I used to put that shit on. That's called, I, she used to do that panty drop music. <laughs> yeah, get some wine, put on some of that Babel Gilberto. <laughs> Girls just melt. Take your take. Hey, take some advice. Don't let this cartoon shit fool you right here. <laughs> All right. Speaking of singers, famous mm-hmm. singers, Bruno Mars was cast in the movie after the director saw his appearance on SNL. Now, here's the thing. Oh, he was brilliant in that, that appearance. If I pe- never saw still, that. You never saw People still talking about like He was one of the best hosts there. Uh-huh. Yes, he, he did good. Okay, Mikhail, you saw that? Yeah. Where, like, he had this, this skit that blew everybody away. Where, yeah. Like, like, he had, like, like, it's like the offices of Pandora where the Pandora machine broke down. <laughs> so they had to get him, like, a copy boy or some, like, an intern, like, hey, we, it, it's it's broken. We, you got to sing these songs. Sing every song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he was able to do it. Like like you know, imitate all these different yeah. singers. Really? Yeah. And you're like, God damn! Like at the drop of a hat, he yeah. had to change to something wow. else. That's a talented boy. He is. Who dressed like a girl in that episode? Yes, he did. And I remember that's that was one of the first times I looked at 
Bruno Mars and said, God damn, but don't you ever dress like a woman around I me. I know. I know. He, he looks like he could be Salma Hayek's sister. Exactly. I don't care what y'all think. When he, I saw him in drag, because you told me about him on SNL. Yeah. You I said, Corey, like, you need to see this. Yeah, it was like, almost like we were looking at a real chick. I ain't gay, but I could be gay for <laughs> Bruno, Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars. <laughs> Shit, Bruno Mars, you ever get in the car with me, you better hope I don't have lipstick and a dress in the trunk, because we drive into the woods. <laughs> And the and guy, you better not tell nobody. And you better not tell nobody. And don't sing that shit either. You better not write a song about that shit. <laughs> the director must have been thinking the same thing because when he cast Bruno Mars, he's he's Roberto. Uh, Roberto was supposed to be masculine, supposed to be real, you know, sporty and athletic. They kind of softened him down when Bruno right. Mars came in. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Made it just more of a singer. Made more of a crooner. Yeah. Actually, I thought he was pretty good in the movie. I did too. He, he was like the one thing I was a surprise. I'm like, hey. It turns out he's a good actor as well. Yeah, I like to well, see. Well, he's a good voice actor. Uh, yeah, I like to see. Let's, let's hold off now. Yeah. See, he's not doing <laughs> a cartoon bird. Yeah. <laughs> and for anybody who really is into the industry or know anything about this writer, Dan Reimer, this was his last movie before he died. Really? He's the writer. I, I saw like four names on the screen. Well, he's one of them. Okay. Okay. Minus one this time. So. <laughs> maybe maybe he, after he saw what they did to his script, he just. <laughs> <laughs> No, My not Dottie. Not Blue. <laughs> <laughs> you pussified. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got a question for you. And no these, question. Okay. And these are both easy. Okay. Because one is a true or false question. Uh-oh. The other is multiple choice. Okay. We're going to go with true or false All first. All right. True or false. When McCall's mate, they mate for life. Mm. True or false. False. Ooh, ooh, it's true. <laughs> oh, damn it. That's why you said they were easy. I was like, oh, he's, he's going to try to trick easy. me. It's too easy. See, you, <laughs> hey, man, you, you thought too hard about that. That's true. You thinking about how I could trick you. <laughs> Don't think too hard about it. Yeah, because when they mate, they mate for life, which is one of the reasons why, Martin, that- That there's so few of them. Well, there's so few of them, and they're, getting, they're becoming fewer because when they mate for life, they like to nest in the same area. So when you deforest and take the nesting area oh. away, then it's hard for them to adjust to another nesting area. Gotcha. They get very set in their way. Very picky, very stubborn, these birds. <laughs> Killing themselves, they're so stubborn. You ready for the multiple choice? Go ahead. All right. Macaws have the intelligence of A, a one year old, B, a two year old, C, a three year old, or D, a four year old. Damn. Uh, how about a three year old? That your answer? Yeah, that's my answer. Oh, oh so man. sorry, man. I got to give you harder <laughs> questions. You get those. <laughs> This easy shit is psyching you out, man. <laughs> Macaws have the intelligence of a four-year-old. Four-year-old. Born. Yes. They can do things, not only like learn words, but they can solve puzzles. They can be taught tricks and performances. And if you look at it, I think they're smarter than a cat. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> man, y'all, you think people think that cats are so smart. No, cats are no. just dumb. That's why you think, oh, cats don't give a fuck. No, they just don't know. <laughs> right. They're just ignorant. They're just stupid. <laughs> My cats are walking around looking like that. <laughs> see, see, my cat comes to me when I call. It's like, no, it thinks you go offering it food. Yeah, exactly. Come on now. <laughs> Can your cat solve a puzzle? Can your cat talk? No. I love that. He talked to your son. Like, boy, you so st- that bird is smarter than you. <laughs> Goddamn bird brain. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Right? No, you're just stupid. That's what it is. Anyway, Martin, that is our review. That is our trivia. That is our quiz right there. All right. I'm so sorry that you Thank didn't get Thank you those to McCall for sitting in. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, shit. What? Oh, shit. Oh, what? 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 I feel a hijack coming on up in this motherfucker. Y'all, you know, I commend you. I give you credit for not covering this, but you can't talk about Rio 2 without bringing up a certain name. His name is Hector, and he's a big Rio fan. His name is Hector, too much Nickelodeon. Thank God for editing, boy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad we weren't streaming that yet. (laughs) Oh, oh, I don't know. I kind of wish we were. (laughs) Even Hector's looking at you like, "Mm, that's a stretch. (laughs) Hector does love this shit, though. Our boy Hector on the site, man. He he said this is going to be one of the highlights of 2014. Say, man, you make him sound like Booberry the Ghost. Because that's what he is. <laughs> oh, his old ego looking at him. Mm, Rio Tune. <laughs> Mc- Mikael. Mikael. Mikasa. Hey, how you doing? Oh, hey, All I right. know we give Hector shit, but, you know, I, I did some reflecting upon it, and I decided I'm going to help support his cause. I started a website. 
It's called Justice for Hector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just us helping Hector. <laughs> anyway, people, you want to reach me, you can reach me at kcoolmans, K-C-O-O-L-M-A-N-Z at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter, it's Martin, at kcoolman. And Martin, I'm easy to find on Facebook. Everybody finds me. Hey, well, they can find me on Facebook, too. Just look Ooh. for Martin Thomas. Mm-hmm. And Twitter, I ain't no stranger to that. Okay. Martin underscore no fro. No fro. All right. And what about you, Mikhail? I keep asking you, but I know you're going to say some bullshit, but go ahead. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> Refugees of spill. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay. Yeah. Fine. I wish I had some. They can find you on the refugees of spill. Yeah, yeah. All right. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. <laughs> Keep celebrating. I'll be pooping on your party promptly. <laughs>